Hi everyone, will you play a video first? Uh, yeah, hit it. Uh, sure. Sea Trip, a travel industry leader and pioneer. On October 28, 1999, the Sea Trip Dream Team, James Liang, Chi Chi, Shang Nam Pang, and Fan Min founded Sea Trip. Forging ahead on a 10 year journey bearing great dreams and hopes. Many talented people joined them, and the team quickly grew. In its first two years, Sea Trip quickly fulfilled its great early promise, incorporating Biz Express and acquiring Modern Express Business Travel Services and Beijing Haiyan Air Ticketing Company. A wide range of teams contributed, laying a solid foundation for the company's continued growth. In 2002, Sea Trip exceeded RMB 100 million in monthly transaction value. In 2003, Sea Trip made its IPO on NASDAQ and set a three year record for a one day share price gain for an IPO. After this successful listing, Sea Trip took a leading role in the market and began to revolutionize the industry. In 2004, Sea Trip first introduced its Vacation Packages Supermarket, establishing a new travel trend in the market. Its customer-centered service philosophy has been the key factor that helps Sea Trip excel. In 2007, Sea Trip moved its headquarters to 99 Fujian Road, Shanghai. In 2008, Prime Minister Wen Jiabao visited Sea Trip headquarters in Shanghai, expressing hopes the company would continue creating a brighter future. In 2010, Sea Trip established a major new call center in Nantong, Jiangsu Province to enhance its presence in the leisure tourism market, continuing to set trends in China's online travel service market and laying the foundation for future growth. Travel with Sea Trip in the decade to come. All right, I just uh, leave a highlight promotion for Sea Trip. Um, but we play the video, we have a meaning for it, okay? Not just promoting. And the team will talk about that uh, during the presentation why we play the video. Um, the, relating to the cloud technology, okay? And uh, today, everything about clouds. Um, all right, let me hit my. My thing, this agenda, and uh, but we go through it. All right. So first one. Okay. Uh, can I come back. Okay. How? Uh, problems we are facing, and I just want to talk about that one. Um, as uh, head of technology for C Trip, in the last ten years has a tremendous growth. In next seven years, I mentioned in the morning, and the business grow. 10 times. So uh, right now, we're adding new business lines. Um, in the last six months, we're adding five, six business, new business lines. Side doubles every year. And the business wants something yesterday. That's uh, as, a technology, uh, as a technologist, uh, you guys doing. And uh, that's uh, you heard in the past uh, many times. All right, the, then side availability must go up, infrastructure costs must go down, okay? And so those are the KPIs um, uh, I have to keep uh, high, uh, it's the high level. Um, 
uh, when CSI, CSI availability goes up, is that 10 times more reliable than today. Uh, infrastructure goes down per, per order. Today, we have a dollar amount per order cost. And I want to drive that down aggressively. So, and cloud going to help to a certain degree. And okay. uh, we will share some showcase with you guys. Um, yep, call center I mentioned. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, the V desktop I, uh, I touched in the morning. So the reason is that why we do this. Okay. One is the cost reason, and I mentioned that. And uh, there's a bunch of other reasons I didn't go in detail in the morning. Here you see first deployment of the uh, physical box deployment versus virtual box deployment, um, which will be much much faster with the uh, uh, with the V desktop. Uh, mass, massive configuration changes. What I mean is that is, uh, if you know uh, managing the data center and you will see some OS upgrades, browser upgrades from IE to Chrome, okay? Now, if you're dealing with 100 desktops, it's not an issue. If you're dealing with 1,000, become a headache. Now, if you're dealing with 10,000, how you would, would, would you be able to do it? Take a year to upgrade the OS because business still continue, right? You see that, oh, you guys stop answering and let me finish the OS upgrade. You cannot do that. So that's the, uh, uh, with, the, with the VM on the back, I just swap the VM like one second. You got everything new, right? So that's uh, physical versus virtual. That's the uh, flexibility we're talking about. Um, all right, so the, another thing changes that I mentioned three call centers physically uh, distributed to uh, different regions. Um, now, we're creating more call centers. Uh, something uh, we're already uh, working right now is called the so Soho, remote call centers. Some, some people can call, call from, uh, answering the call from home. That requires technology to do that. And now we have uh, many uh, agents working from home. And if we have technology ready for them, uh, that's uh, increase the uh, call agent workforce, also lower the cost, um, because they don't have to physically come to the call center answering the phone, right? And they can, uh, some costs can take from uh, at home is okay. All right, so the, um, those are the reasons in the, then there's a private cloud. Today we're going to get in more details in why we're doing that. Is uh, um, the one thing in the, uh, I, I mentioned that 10 times growth in the required lots of hardware uh, computing power, uh, flat, compu co computing capacity, uh, and more machines. In the, uh, we need to manage that too. And uh, uh, today, if you look at the data center, it's a typical. Okay, I look at a couple of data centers across the industry, e-commerce. E-commerce side, um, server server hardware utilizations at call center, any given call center, okay, uh, without cloud technology, is very low, okay. And that's the number I can quote, it, and you can you, you can use it for your reference. And uh, uh, some some uh, most majority of call centers uh, server utilization is only about twenty five percent. So in other words, is that 70 some percent, uh, uh, the power, the capacity was not being used, and uh, because the uh, technology uh, used to build the call center and how you manage it, and uh, so there's uh, quite a depth uh, details on that. But I don't. Uh, point is that is uh, if you don't have a technology to manage the call center, cost go into the cost increase like this. And so there's a called elastic computing. Uh, if we can shrink and expand as needed, as the traffic grows, as the business grows, that would be best utilize the resources in the IDC environment. All right, so the uh, business agility I'm talking about, and if you talk about uh, new businesses, they don't have much traffic, but it's a new business you have to work on, right? Uh, also, you have to uh, do active active because uh, achieve high availability. So two servers minimum. However, the business uh, today's server is like a four core, uh, 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 
uh, ACPUs in the, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a kind of a commodity already, right? And that they don't, new business doesn't consume lots of computing powers. But you need to give it to a, a server to them. So uh, put uh, new business stack together as into one server, that would be uh, uh, reduce the, uh, reduce the uh, hardware footprint dramatically. So that's, uh, that's the thing we have to use in some virtualization uh, cloud technology. Um, fast deployment, uh, I don't, you guys know already, so it's a provisioning VM stuff, okay. If you, right now we're adding servers every week, right? Uh, hundreds of servers. Uh, then how you can quickly, I, I, I don't want adding servers like uh, take weeks to add. I want to take uh, minutes to add servers into the data center. Uh, you have to have, a, you have, to have a, some technology to do that. Otherwise, manually do installation is uh, not possible at that speed. Um, all right, so I'm, uh, those are the, some reasons in the way uh, like using cloud technology, especially is uh, uh, open stack is uh, uh, we using in many areas, uh, both areas. And now I, I introduce my team. They working on the, this technology for, for a couple years now and uh, have a, they want to share with you techni technical know-how, how they did it. Uh, uh, the, let me introduce uh, Simon and Yi Jing, same time. So both of them, they are in my team is system engineering and uh, they have a creating a, a group. Uh, working on the cloud technology in those two areas, uh, uh, they're getting into technical details. Okay, have a fun. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Eric. Okay, uh, thanks, Eric, to highlight the, uh, uh, the problem we are facing and also uh, the approach we are gonna take. Um, now my name is Simon Chen, Eric just mentioned, and I'm the director of uh, uh, system uh, 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 engineers. And I our department is responsible for carry out or uh, implement the strategy uh, for Ctrip's uh, cloud, uh, um, cloud in computing. Uh, so once the direction is set, the strategy is set, uh, the next thing is some, some technical decisions. Uh, so we have to, uh, now from my uh, department, we have to make some uh, tough decisions. Uh, first of all, why open stack? Um, we, take, we, take, we took a quite a long time try to evaluate a couple of uh, options. Um, uh, cloud stack is one, and also where's others. And uh, one event to make us uh, made our mind is the IBM joined the uh, OpenStack uh, camp. That's the beginning of the year. Uh, so make this decision a little bit easier. Before that, we do the boss tracking and try to see uh, which one is uh, uh, easier, uh, more be, uh, and also uh, if the uh, data set is more uh, richer. Uh, so after the IBM uh, joined the uh, OpenStack camp, we um, designed the, open, uh, the OpenStack, uh, OpenStack technology as a um, very big active uh, community. And uh, meanwhile, uh, it has a, a relatively rich uh, uh, module set. And uh, of course, it has the uh, heavy endorsers like IBM. And also, we noticed uh, it has some mission critical uh, deployment already, like uh, PayPal already done that. So we think it's sort of a proven technology. So we uh, adapted the uh, OpenStack as our uh, technical, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, cloud computing platform. And then we have designed, okay, first of all, we have to go to the uh, Proud Cloud. Why we could go to Proud Cloud, a private cloud? Actually, uh, this is a relatively easy decision. Um, in China, as you guys already know, there's no alternative. The Amazon is sort of a too far away. Uh, they talk about coming to the China and they keep talking, keep talking, and we never see them arrive. And uh, the uh, Microsoft set up something, but it is, uh, uh, to us, it's less proven. So we think, oh, bad, bad, we just go with the private one. That's why we decided to go to the uh, private cloud. And the third one is uh, why we build an uh, in-house, the house grow uh, cloud manager platform in, instead of a buy one or 
uh, use some uh, uh, ready uh, te uh, technology or product. The reasons we try a couple of combinations, uh, but we all run, in, uh, all run into the problem with the uh, integration with our existing uh, tools and uh, platforms. So we designed all, we rather just go from the ground up, uh, build the one uh, ourselves. It will manage both uh, bare metal and uh, VM provisioning and also other uh, uh, management uh, accomplish the other management uh, tasks. The third one, uh, strategy has been set and uh, the technology decision has been made. Now it's execution time. So we, um, all of the execution is depends on the team. We have to make a decision. If we want to take time to uh, uh, build a full staff team, or we rely on heavily on the community and with a small team, so we designed a with a small team because the one thing is the uh, open stack engineers are very hard to come by. Uh, we are still hiring, but uh, it's not easy, you guys know. So we designed to have a small team, but rely on the community. We have right now uh, 15 engineers, very talented, uh, very dedicated, highly dedicated. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, within a year, uh, deliver three product lines, the bare metal uh, provisioning management, the uh, VM provisioning management, and also VDI management platform. So our uh, team is very de dedicated. If you want to see, uh, uh, put a face to the team, here's the guy. And uh, Yi Ting Wu is the senior manager of our uh, cloud uh, platform. He will go through the uh, details, uh, tell you guys, uh, what we have done, and uh, what lesson we have learned. So here's the eating. Okay, another tip. Here's the mouse. Later on, if you have a wireless keyboard and the mouse, it can use it as a click. Very handy. You can try at home. Thank you, Simon and Eric. Uh, Eric and Simon introduced a lot of uh, business requirements and also our cloud strategies. Now I'm going to give you more uh, detail from technical perspective. So uh, I think Eric, during uh, the keynotes, we introduced a, lo a lot of numbers of, about our call centers. And right now we have more than 10,000 call center agents. And besides those How data. Was Mario? Huh? How was it? Do I need to turn off? Sorry. Hello? OK. So. Help? OK. Besides those data, uh, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, it was beginning in the early this year. And one day, Eric and Simon, we meet together. And Eric asked, hey, Yiting, is it possible to build a VDI solution for our call center? And I say, yeah, we can try. And so we, we get started and do a prototype. And at that time, we also uh, heavily developed based on OpenStack. And finally, we find that OpenStack is actually a very good backend for VDI. And we start uh, hiring, and then we, we, we build a small team. And today, we just load out more than 100 sync clients in our call center and both for some interns. And the, the goal is to deploy more than 1,000 V desktop instances in our call center. And also, we, we start a new satellite office, which will have 300 agents. So we will also deploy the desktop layer. And there will be several hundred miles away. But we will have dedicated network to connect our headquarters and the satellite office. So uh, I'm going to give you a demo. Uh, to help you understand how we set up this demo, and also thank you to the staff. They have a lot. I have a small thing client here, and then it will connect to a switch. And that switch connect to our laptop. The, on, on the laptop here, the ThinkPad, and actually he running an Ubuntu and with Dev Stack and also a KVM. And that Windows 7 is actually, we, we just started playing the, uh, the slides and also the videos. So that sounds fantastic, right? We already been in, a, in our V desktop.
Now I'm going to give you some demos here. This is our login window. It's pretty simple. Our call center agent just enter their username and password. That password actually is our COP authentication, which is use Windows 80 as a backend. And then you just log in. Let me type out the password. Here it goes. It's connecting. Now you see the video, right? I'm going to play the video again. Now just for a second. Oh, sorry. Incorporating Biz Express. In two okay, I'm not going to play again here. Just show you. Now, we also have uh, um, this is the dashboard based on Horizon, and we, we add a dashboard there for the v VDI. And actually, you can see a VM pool, which is over here. I will give that bigger, yeah. And you can see some cool information here, uh, the MAC address of all this sync client, and also the IP address. And we use the demo user to log in this v v desktop, OK? And we also have some very cool dashboard here. Uh, this, those data are not the accurate because uh, we don't actually have so many VMs running. But it gives you an idea. We were using use this dashboard in our production, right? And also, I would like to. Um, There was something really interesting. Now you, you see that we use the VNC, and <laughs> you, you see yourself, right? It, it's recursive. OK, this is really cool. And I think when, uh, when our customer or any call center agents, they have problem, and our help desk will just Log in and then see the, uh, see the scenarios, what, what errors happen, right? And they fix it as soon as possible. Now I'm going to go back to the slides. So this gives you an overview how we put the desktop on top of OpenStack. And we simply add sync client. And for Keystone, we use the Windows 80 as a backend. And we actually did a lot of development based on Keystone so that it can support some group policy and domain, OU, something like that to support the VDI. So for the sync client, it will first try to authenticate with Keystone. And then when it is past the uh, authentication and authorization, it will go back and say hello to the Nova API. Give me a VM. I need this template and this spec. And the Nova API will try to uh, talk to the scheduler, and the scheduler will find the best match uh, VM. Either it will be in our ex existing VM pools, or it will schedule a new VM across our uh, Compute nodes. And also, we have uh, NAS storage. Uh, I will give more detail later. And this is give you an overview about our stack. And in, this, in the compute node, we actually run in, uh, in local storage with two, 200 gig SSD and also 160 gig memory. Two socket, a cost CPU. And for networking, we have that network and also internet network. And we, we use NAS, and it, it actually mixed with um, SAS disk and SATA disk, which can have a good 
performance and also the cost balance for the ARM thin client. This is the very important thing, right? And it can, we have different spec for different scenarios or different requirements. It can have one CPU or two CPU or um, one gig memory or less. As for the um, compute nodes, we actually run on Ubuntu. And yesterday, I actually see the CEO of Ubuntu, and we, we have a small uh, chat. It's based on KVM and Nova on, on top of it. And in the network side, we are using Neutron with open vSwitch and VLAN mode. And currently, it's quite enough for us for the VLAN mode. So for uh, Swift, we will use it to uh, backup, for the instance backup or snapshot. And we put templates in glance. For the Windows GNOME profile and some folder redirection, we will put it into our storage in the back end. And for the ARM thin client, we're actually running also on Ubuntu. And we use Sort for the large scale depo uh, deployment and management. And um, obviously, it's using the spice. OK, yes. So you know our call center is actually running 24 by 7 and on shifting, right? During the shifting uh, period, there will be uh, thousands of users try to boot their VM and log in and log out. So one challenge we have is how to deal with boot storm. We try many solutions like um, fiber channel over, uh, say on, over fiber channel, sorry. And it turned out that it can have good performance, but it's really expensive for a large scale deployment and easily become a bottleneck. And we also try local storage. It simply doesn't have the enough IOPS for us. Finally, we find the best match, which is the commodity SSD. And our performance testing data show that um, you can link clone one VM in one second, and we put a v, uh, 50 VM at the same time. And actually, it takes 30 seconds. Very, really fast and good enough for us. And we also have a program to simulate the workload of, of our call center agents. And the testing results show that we can actually run 60 Windows 7 VM in single compute node. So what about logging and logout storm? We try to put our roaming profile and folder onto the uh, redirect into the NAS. And the reason why we don't put the user data and profile in local SSD is that it's quite expensive. You know, some users will have several, several gig personal data, and also it, it will become a single point of failure. Once the, once the computer is down, there's no way or you need to take a long time to recover the user's data. So for user profile, actually, it's, it's quite small for our scenario, like 10 megabytes. But for, for user data, it would be several hundred megabytes or several, gig, several gigabytes. And for the first login, it generally takes uh, 20 to 30 seconds. That means Windows also need to prepare for desktop. And for the second round, it would be less than 20, uh, 10 seconds. So what about live migration? I think live migration is really important for maintenance and also for prior really good user experience to our customers. Thanks to KBM, and actually, with the golden image both on the same, uh, on, on different compute nodes, with link clone, you can just migrate the incremental to another compute node. And our testing data shows that with one gig memory, uh, two gig memory, and one gig incremental, it actually takes 30 seconds. And since we have the same client in, in the user side, sorry, in the, in the user side, we can make our live migration transparent to our customer. Because when we do live migration, and the connection between the user and, and our computer node will be disconnected. And we have reconnect 
a mechanism in the same client. In the same client, we'll try to talk with Nova API. Hey, what's happening? Where's my VM? OK, you migrate to another host, and then I will connect to that host for, for access. And that generally will take like three to five seconds, and user will just see the bright and, and see our logo reconnecting, and then it will recover. So this is also really cool and good enough for our scenario. So what about is user experience? You know we already deployed uh, 100 sync client in our call center, and some user sometimes they will complain, OK, the VM is not as fast as my desktop. So how will you measure your, your performance? Uh, as our call center is actually, they, they, uh, the, our agents get a call, and then they will they will talk with our customer, and it's finally we'll put the order or change the order in our off offline system. So the page speed of our off offline is really important to measure our user experience. So we, we have a real-time monitoring, and you, you will see uh, how many time was being spent on uh, the DOM landing and how many for DNS lookup. So I'm, I'm going to end here for the v desktop because we also have uh, another cool demo sh to show you. Sorry. OK, it's about bare metal provisioning. So generally, when you set up to put the bare metal on top of the rack, it will take several weeks before it really takes trans a transaction in production. You will see that uh, side ops will power on the VM, uh, the, the bare metal, and switch it to a product, uh, provisioning VM, and then waiting for networking engineer to allocate IP address, and the assets will need to do the baking and a lot of hardware configuration such as ILO configuration, RAID, upgrade the firmware, and also configure the BIOS. After that, you can have OS installed. But especially for Windows, even you have OS installed, you still need to do a lot of post-install steps, such as patching, activated licensing, and configure IP address, or even a NIC bond. And finally, you can switch it to the production VLAN, and you can start load all your applications on that bare metal. So at the time when we try to build a bare metal provisioning system, we take we look into Nova bare metal provisioning. There is a driver existing in the in the code, but it's, it does it, it has very limited feature. It only takes the PXC and it, there's no way to do uh, post install. Maybe you can do it with puppet or short. And we, at that time, we already been working on Razor, which is a Puppy Labs sub-project. And with Razor, you can do a lot more. Also, we also customize Razor. I will give you more detail later. And with, the, with our normal Razor driver, we actually can take over this auto-discovery, baking, hardware configuration, OS installation, and also the post-install. And right now, we are also working with our networking engineering team to, um, to do the VLAN switching API. And actually, they already have the VPI, uh, API ready, and we are working on testing. Now I'm going to switch the demo to my Mac. OK. I think you can, can read it on the screen, OK. So this is our customized portal. And this is actually a very cute logo. So auto discovery. Now you can see several bare metals in, in this table. And this one, I think we can click and see this is uh, from Huawei. You, you see a lot of details here. A lot of details. Memory, NIC, MAC address, CPU. And also we have several. Uh, HP bare metals here, like 360, and you can do search. 
size, 360. And here you go. Now I'm going to provision one bandwidth here. Let's say we want to play with this one. 360 G7, okay. And then click the provision button. Here is the UI, and then you can select baking, how many hours you want, and what, what's the read you want to do. Okay, read one. And what's the OS? Currently, we support ESSI 5.1 and also Ubuntu SandOS, including Windows 2K8. Let's try Ubuntu. Oh, sorry. We forget to select the, 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 the networking configuration. So for the ILO, we have several uh, network here, and we choose the BMC, which is our provisioning VLAN. Oh, sorry, it's our ILO VLAN. And then we also have a production VLAN here. Let's go down. And then you just click. Now you can see the job is being, it's doing here, right? It's launched. And you also see several, you cannot see the IP address because it haven't go to the Nova and, uh, sorry, go to the Neutron and allocate for IP address. And so, so that's for the ILO IP. Now you can see many jobs are already being done here. We can click and see what we have. And here is the, where you submit and what's the IP, IP address being allocated to BMC or the NIC for your production VLAN. And also here is a detailed log. It, baking firmware, sorry, the screen just log. And also for, for the BIOS and precede, this is actually in the IPXC. And finally, you, you will see something that APT get and also configure the networking. Yeah, I will also show you a uh, Windows. Let me find the Windows. Here. Sorry, I think the screen doesn't work. It turned out that my, my Mac actually <laughs> out of battery, sorry. But I think we all we almost had the demo done. And, oh, okay. This is my thing client. So it doesn't need, uh, I think it's really cool and it's, it's really fantastic. And I really want to take this opportunity to say thank you to my team. Uh, they may, might not be able to see the live videos, but I, I, I also want to say, uh, say big thank you to them. Uh, they, they are very talented and also work, working really hard to make this happen. So again, thank you. I think we, oh, sorry. we haven't ended yet, sorry. <laughs> we haven't ended yet, and I, I see the slides. Thank you. Is it possible to? OK. We, we also have one more. So it, it's a lot of stuff we've been doing. I'm going to bypass this one. And those are a lot of details here. I'm not, I don't have time to cover. And yesterday, actually, I'm talking with the public lab team, and they actually working on, I think, almost the same thing. They want to bring Nova inside OpenStack. Uh, sorry bring Razor inside OpenStack. And I think we, can, we maybe can collab, collaborate together and bring, maybe sometimes we can become open source. And that, that's the one thing we really want to do. So some challenge here. And now for VM provisioning. We have lots of VMs. And the QE farm, Dell farm have more than 1,000 VMs and also 1,500 VMs in production. And I think OpenStack have a lot to help us to uh, speed up the re release cycle because you, uh, the developers may need uh, their VM and they also need some feature testing, load performance testing, 
and also the final staging before you really go to production. We have all those environments based on OpenStack, and it really helps a lot. And also for the C builder, actually it's, it's a distributed build system. It's on top of op OpenStack. And actually we are doing that based on Jenkins, and Jenkins has a, actually has a cloud plugin which could do auto rescale. So uh, we, if we have too many build requests and we will, we will just scale out, and when the queue becomes smaller, and we probably just uh, decom some VMs and return it back to our pool. So for VMware support, you know we already using VMware in our production, so we, we need to have a feature to help our operation to import those existing VMs and ESSI. As for the VMware driver, uh, we, we add some enhancements, and also we also talk to IBM developers, and maybe there will be some collaborate. For networking, we use in Neutron, and also we support DB switch and distributed virtual switch. And also, we add customization spec support. The template management will be uh, help operation to import the existing template in the data store. So for scheduler filters, we have a very unique requirements, which is that we have some uh, ESS hypervisors, which they using local storage. So that doesn't make much sense to create a cluster and it will block you uh, because you, once you need to move one hypervisor in or out, it takes a long time. So we, we just create a hypervisor folder and put those ESSI under this folder. So we add a scheduled filter there and also for data store. For different tenants, we can have different data store, uh, regular expression so that can be used to find the right one data store for you. And we also integrate with DNS as a service Windows AD as a service, and including the Zabbix API. Um, I want to take some seconds here to mention about our DNS. We actually, for the internal DNS, we are using uh, Windows, a, uh, Windows DNS for a historical reason. And our uh, internet DNS will be on bind. And we also know that there is a project called Desnet, so we will we will work, 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 working on and putting our DNS API and add that driver into Desnet. So uh, one more thing is that we are working on putting our, or migrate our existing VMware in infrastructure into KVM. Some reason, like cost saving, lots of license saving, actually. And also, we can, as a website, you can do HA inside application layer instead of in the OS layer or in the infrastructure layer. And we also want to have more open source. And the plan, this month we just start build our new staging environment with 400 VMs, could be more, on VM, uh, on KVM. And we are just starting migrating our QA farm, their farm, so, and also our OpenStack, uh, we, we will add features so that we can support both KVM and VMware together. And we will see more migration in production next year. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you for joining this session. And thank you for Eric and Simon for the great support.